Hey everyone and welcome back to another video on coding with Soham Jain. Today we're going to be doing the warm-up one exercises in coding bat python and I'll be giving a full walkthrough and explanation for all of these problems. So let's go ahead and get started with sleep in and the problem says the parameter weekday is true if it is a weekday and the parameter vacation is true if we are on vacation. We need to sleep in if it's not a weekday or we're on vacation. And let's return true if we sleep in. So since we need to return true if we sleep in, this sentence over here tells us what we need to code, which is if it's not a weekday or we're on vacation, then we can simply return true. And in our else case, we don't actually need to write out the word else because it'll run this code if the if statement doesn't go through. So we can just do return false. And all of those are correct, so we can move on to the next problem. This one says, we have two monkeys, A and B, and the parameters A smile and B smile indicate if each is smiling. We're in trouble if they're both smiling or if neither of them is smiling and we need to return true if we're in trouble. So to check if either of them is smiling, we can first check if not a smile and b smile, and then our next case will be if a smile and not b smile. So here are our two cases, and for both of these, we wanna return false because that means that we're not in trouble. So return false and return false. Our only other case is will be return true. And this is when either both of them are not smiling or both of them are smiling. Now we can move on to the next problem, which is sum double. Given two int values, return their sum. Unless the two values are the same, then return double their sum. So let's start by checking if both values are the same and we can do this by writing if a is equal to b and if it is we need to return double their sum which is return two times and then in parentheses we'll do a plus b and in our else case we'll just do return a plus b and if we run this it's all correct and we can move on given an in n, return the absolute difference between n and 21, except return double the absolute difference if n is over 21. So we can start by first checking if n is over 21, and we'll just do if n is greater than 21. So in this case, it says return double the absolute difference. So since n is greater than 21, the absolute difference would just be n minus 21. So we'll just do return two times that, two times n minus 21. In our else case, we have return 21 minus n, and this is the absolute difference since in our else case, we know that n is less than or equal to 21. So this will be an absolute difference. And that's all correct. The next problem is parrot trouble. If we have a loud talking parrot, the hour parameter is the current hour time in the range 0 to 23. So that's how we know that this one is an integer. And we're in trouble if the parrot is talking and the hour is before 7 or after 20. So this parameter talking is probably going to be a boolean. And we want to return true if we're in trouble. So let's look through some of these. True tells us that the parrot is talking, and since 6 is before 7, that means true we're in trouble, and it goes on for the other cases as well. So we can check if the hour is before 7 by doing hour less than 7, or the hour is after 20, and we want to see if the parrot is talking. This means that we're in trouble, so we'll return true, otherwise we'll just return false. And if we click go, it's all correct. Now for the next problem, makes 10. We're given two ints, A and B, and we want to return true if one of them is 10 or if their sum is 10. So to check if their sum is 10, we can do if A plus B is equal to 10. 
And to check if one of them is 10, we can check or A is equal to 10 or B is equal to 10. And in this case, we want to return true. Otherwise, we'll just return false. So that's all correct. The next problem is near 100. Given an int n, return true if it is within 10 of 100 or 200. And they've given us this note that says absolute value of a num computes the absolute value. All right, so that probably tells us that we're going to need to use this function. But let's break down the problem a little bit more. So return true if it is within 10 of 100 or 200 tells us that we need to return true if it's greater than 90 and less than 110, or if it's greater than or equal to 190 or less than or equal to 210. But instead of doing that the long way, we can use this absolute value function and we'll check if absolute value of n minus 100 is less than or equal to 10. And then we can copy this part over here for 200 as well. So if we do this, then we can return true in this case. And our other case will just return false. If we run that, all of our test cases are correct. And we'll move on to the next problem. Given two int values, return true if one is negative and one is positive. Except the parameter negative is true. So this is our third parameter over here, which is a Boolean then we return true only if both are negative. So let's start by looking at our negative parameter. So we'll just do if negative. And in this case, we want to return true if both are negative. So if a is less than zero and b is less than zero, that's when we return true. And the other case, we return false. But now we also need to check if negative is false. So in this case, we return true if one is negative and one is positive. So if a is less than zero and b is greater than zero is our first case. And our other case is if a is greater than zero and b is less than zero, then we also need to return true. So we can copy this for both of these. And then in our else case, we'll just return false. And if we click go, then all of those are correct. And for the next problem, not string, given a string, return a new string where not has been added to the front. However, if the string already begins with not, return the string unchanged. So for this problem, it's important to note that we're checking if it begins with not, which has three characters. But if it doesn't, then we need to add this not with a space after it. So this one is four characters. So let's start by checking if it begins with that string not. So we can use slices if the first three characters is equal to not. And what this does is it checks the first three characters. So since there's nothing before the colon, it, it counts all of the characters before this index three. And this means that it begins with not. So we'll just return the string as it is already. Otherwise we want to return this not string plus str, which is our parameter. So that's all correct. If we move on to the next problem, missing char. Given a non-empty string and an int n, return a new string where the char at index n has been removed. All right, so before reading the rest of this problem, we can just look at these uh, parameters so it makes a little bit more sense. So over here, for all three of these, we're given the word kitten. And when it's one, we get rid of the i because that's at index one. When it's zero, we're getting rid of the k and so on. And the problem says the value of n will be a valid index of a char in the original string. So we don't need to do any if or else checking. And instead, we just need one line to solve this. So we'll return the string until that character. So this is similar to the slice that we did using three. But this time, we have our parameter n plus we need to do every character after this n, but we don't want to include it. So we'll just do n plus one and then a colon after that. And the colon after that will include all the characters after this value. It's important to note that we're, when we're doing n plus one, since it's before the colon, that means it's inclusive. 
But this n over here, it's not inclusive because it's after the colon. If we run this, we'll see that all of our cases are correct. And now we're on to front and back. Given a string, return a new string where the first and last characters have been exchanged. All right, so instead of immediately jumping onto doing what the problem states, we need to be aware of cases where we just have one or zero characters because we want to return the string originally how it is. So let's make sure that we're checking for if the length of the string is greater than or equal to two. And that's when we're going to swap the first and last characters. So we'll do return string of negative one, and this gives us the last character plus our string from, so now we need, want to do all the characters not inclusive of the first and last characters. So we'll start with one since this is inclusive, but now we need to remember that after the colon, it's not inclusive. So we'll do a negative one plus our first character, which is zero. If you guys want to learn more about how slices work, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video on these in the future. And our else case is just going to return the string. So these are all correct and we can move on to the next problem. This is the last problem in warm up one for coding bat Python. And it says given a string, we'll say that the front is the first three characters of the string. And if the string length is less than three, the front is whatever is there. So here we're probably going to need to check the length of the string again, like we did for the last problem. And we're, we'll return a new string, which is three copies of the front. So let's try to figure out what this front is. So first we can do if the length is greater than or equal to three, then we just need the front, which is the first three characters. So the first three would be using a slice colon three. And then if we do this times three, it'll give us three copies of our first three characters. So for example, if it's JAV, when we do times three, it'll give us this output. In our else case, this means that the length is less than three. Then our front is the string itself. So it'll be the return string times three. And that's it for the warm up one of Python and coding bat. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And please leave a comment with suggestions that you guys want to see for future videos. I can also do other coding bat videos such as for warm up two or the other exercises that are here. And I'm also interested in doing Java and Python. So please let me know what you guys think about that. Thank you once again for watching this video and please be sure to subscribe.